thing came out pretty good tested out all the colors on my em 1010 to be honest with you guys it looks really good boom wait a minute just like that boom 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 boom, boom. just like that eight, 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 dub productions just like that like comment subscribe just like that boom wait a minute just like that a hey, dub you ready wait a minute we got that em 1010 in the space you talking about some no excuses to make money guys guys it's your boy back again with another video i hope you're excited because i'm excited got the em 1010 all set up and we are about to do a tension test about to take it through some runs and show you guys some things that you might want to look out for if you have an em 1010 or if you're thinking about purchasing one these are going to be some things that you want to test out and make sure you adjust so that your machine runs optimal it is optimal capacity guys i learned this stuff from willie shots out to willie from Racoma. he taught me all these tension tests and i have to say i did it on my mt because i hadn't did it on my mt before and now my mt is running even better than it was running before guys and um yeah this is valuable stuff right here that i'm about to show you guys in this video so stay tuned and pay attention rewind it back if you don't understand something leave it in the comments below and i'll explain everything guys but uh in the meantime let's jump in this video so you're going to want to pick a design that has a big tatami stitch like a long area where it does a tatami stitch because you're going to constantly be starting and stopping the machine and trimming the machine to make sure that the threads are trimming you're going to be using the start and stop button right there and using the scissors button right here and starting it again and seeing if it leaves a tr it leaves the tail and then stopping it and then cutting it and see if it cuts correctly for each different color all right so um all right so i got my uh this might bear with me right here i got my design loaded up i just need to choose a color all right so i'm gonna start with the first thread which is one all right um, i'm just gonna program random threads this is not gonna be accurate i'm just picking random threads here but we're not gonna make it past all this all right we're not gonna make it past all this all right so that's my design and all that's left to do is hit start on the on the um, machine you see the trace button right here you always you should always trace to make sure that the needle or the foot does not hit the rim of the hoop. All right, so I'm just gonna press trace even though I've already traced it. And I can already tell that this design is not going to hit the rim of the hoop. All right, once again, so you guys can see. It's getting close to the top, but it's not there. All right, so I'm just gonna hit start and let the machine start um and then i'm gonna stop it all right just so you guys know what i'm talking about i'm right, hit start real fast stop trim all right so that's pretty good that color is pretty good it didn't leave a tail i'm gonna start it again on the same color And I stop it, trim, did not leave a tail. All right, so now that I know the first thread is good, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the second thread. And right now I'm just adjusting my entire machine. So now I'm gonna go and change one to two, all right? I'm just checking out my threads here, making sure everything is straight. And I'm gonna do the same thing, all right? I'm just gonna check and make sure Everything's good. Hit start. It's going to go over. Well, it should have went over to two. Hold on. It didn't go over to two. So let me stop it again. Then back to screen. Number two. Okay. Okay. So I didn't acknowledge it. All right. So let me hit start. It should move over to needle number two. Yep. There you go. And once again, I don't see any tail, which is good. Gonna hit stop, trim. That trim good. Hit start again on that same color. No tail. 
stop trim. See that right there? It didn't, okay, I trimmed it, but let me do that color one more time. Start. Oh, we're doing good, looking good. So we're good on that needle. Stop, trim. All right, so we're doing good. So now what I didn't do before, I'm gonna show you now so you don't make that mistake. Um, when you go to change the color of the same thread, you go hit the thread, right? And this is on thread number two. I'm gonna change that to thread number three because we're checking all of them on its Tommy stitch three. And then you acknowledge it by pressing OK. And then that officially changes to thread number three. Now when I press start, is instead of starting on thread number two, it's gonna go to thread number three, all right? So I'm just checking, like I said, to make sure all the threads are okay. Switch to thread number three. All right, it's looking good to me. Looking good. I'm gonna stop it. Trim. Trim's good. Start again. No tail. Looks like they did a good job um, calibrating this machine before they sent it to me. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna trim it again. And right now, what, what stitches per minute do I have it on? It's on 800 stitches per minute right now. So, um, okay, so now let's go on to thread number four. Four, okay, start. Looking good. Stop. Trim. All right, same thing. And guys, that's pretty much, I was hoping that it would need some adjusting and I could show you guys how to adjust it, but it looks like they calibrated this machine pretty good. So let me just tell you guys what you would have done. Okay, so if you would have seen a tail on this right here on, on, on like when it, when, the, when it started embroidering, if you just saw a tail or when you stopped, you would have slightly tightened up your tension by just simply turning this knob right here just a little bit on the, pro, on, on the corresponding needle that needed to be tightened. You, so you tightly turn it clockwise, like maybe like a half a turn or a full turn. And then also um, turn the top knob if need be on the same thread, all right? just so they're nice and even, all right? So that's what you would, would have done if you uh, had tails, if you had tails after the uh, thread trims. Another instance where you wanna tighten up your tension with those two little knobs is if you're having bird nesting. Bird nesting is when the fabric is uh, nesting at the bottom right here and it's getting real thick, all right? So if you, you wanna tighten up your tension because it's too loose, all right? Another instance where you wanna tighten up your tension is if See this right here where it's a little loose right here? If you're having a whole bunch of loose embroiders like that, if it's embroidering and all the loops are coming out like this, you want to tighten up your tension, all right? So those are, those are the cases where you want to tighten up your tension. Also, if, you, if, you, if the machine goes to trim and it doesn't trim, you want to tighten up your tension, okay? An instance where you'd want to loosen the tension, turn those two knobs counterclockwise, not clockwise, counterclockwise, loosen up the tension a little bit, is if you're having a lot of thread breaks or thread breaks in general, you want to loosen the tension a little bit. The thread is pulling too hard, so it's having thread breaks. If your thread is shedding, um, that's like if if you love your look at the thread and it's like it's like the thread is coming apart and it's it's real thin at one point and it's bunched up together at another point, then that means your tension is too tight. You also you want to loosen it a little bit. And also if when you start the machine and the foot and needle's going up and down, but the thread's not catching, so the ma machine stops. If the thread's not catching, then yeah, you wanna loosen up your tension because your tension is too tight. The top, just loosen up those knobs counterclockwise a little bit, all right? Now, there are instances where you wanna tighten or loosen your bobbin tension, and that has to do with uh, the little screw on the actual bobbin case. Let me show you, let me get the bobbin out real fast, guys. Grab this bobbin, take it out. All right, there's a screw on the bobbin. Let me show you guys right here. This little screw on the bobbin right here. There's a small screw, then there's a big screw. 
The big screw is a screw that you adjust if you want to um, if you want to adjust the tension on your bobbin, and it's the same thing just like the top. To make it tighter, you turn it clockwise to make the tension looser. To loosen up the tension on the bobbin, you turn it counterclockwise. If you are having bird nesting, so there's two things in bird nesting. All right, this is another one of them. If the other issue didn't work, then if you're having bird nesting then you want your tension on the bobbin is too tight. So you want to loosen it. Just grab this, the Phillips flathead screwdriver that's provided in the, in the kit and just turn it slightly counterclockwise to loosen it just a little bit, just in little intervals, all right? So loosen it. And when you loosen it, you want, your, you want it to be relatively smooth when, the bob, when, it, when it turns in here. You want it to be rel relatively smooth, all right? So loosen that tension up a bit on that big screw. Also, if the needle is not catching, right? That's another case where you can try this because your tension might be too tight. Like when the needle when when the needle goes to grab the thread at the bottom, it's too tight so it can't quite grab a hold of it. All right? So instances where the bobbin is too loose. All right? If your bottom thread, if you're embroidering say a blue and your and your top thread, your white thread is showing at the top, then your bobbin's too loose. Then you need to turn that screw slightly, about a quarter turn, quarter turn intervals, turn it a quarter, put it back in, try it out. If you're st still seeing the top, the bottom thread showing at the top, turn it a little bit more, try it again. All right, so those are all the, all the tension issues with this machine that you would wanna uh, watch out for, believe it or not. So it's not that much. And, and those issues right there will have people saying then thinking that their machine does not work. But in actuality, they just don't know the settings and don't know how to, you know, this this comes with trial and error. And shout out to Willie from Racoma because he's the one that um, actually showed me all this stuff. And you know what I mean? And, and I, I, I have to share it with you guys because this is one of the reasons why people, you know, blame the machines because they don't know what they're doing. All right, so we're on four. Let's check five, check five now. Okay, and let's go ahead and see how that one tests out, if we need to make any adjustments to that. Looking good, stop, trim. All right, we're halfway through. Start again, same one, five. Looking good, stop, trim. This is a lot more plasticky kind of sorta. Of. I don't know what other word to, 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 to say. It's, it sounds a lot different. I'm gonna have to get used to these sounds. It sounds a lot different than my MT-1501. All right, looks good. Stop, trim. And this is just two sheets of, of tearaway stable, um, cutaway stabilizer, two sheets of cutaway. Do that again. But so far it looks like they did a good job calibrating my machine before they sent it to me, guys. Yeah, they did a good job. All right, so we're gonna go to seven, needle number seven, start. Now we cooking on gap. That's, oh yeah, you know what? See what I didn't do? I didn't um I didn't press okay. Seven. Okay. Okay. Oh wait, no, no, no. Boom. Seven. Okay. Alright, there we go. Alright. Looking good. Sounds funny. Interesting. Trim. Sounds a little interesting there. Start again. That's metal hitting metal or something. Stop. Trim. All right. Let's test needle number eight. Okay. Start. And if any of those things happen, then you know how to adjust for it. 
and my and guys, because I did not do that on my MT1501, um, when Willie from Racoma told me how to do this trick, I had to go home, I had to go where my other machine was and adjust all the settings because even though my machine's been working the whole time, my settings were all off. You're talking about, you know, occasional thread breaks and after I set it up correctly, let me tell you something. This is the best secret that I'm telling you guys. It's not even a secret. It's just a thing that just is. It just happens, I guess. And you have to adjust for it. But most people don't know how to adjust for it. So they just think their machine is messed up or, you know, Racomb doesn't make good machines or something like that. But even if it wasn't a Racomb machine, you would think the same thing because you don't know how to adjust the settings for tension, right? Trim that. That's good. And now it's about to start stitching out the tatami stitch. Now we're on 10. And look, we made it all the way through and it seems to me like all the threads are good. Good to go. That one looked like it left a slight tail. Stop. Trim. We do it again. No, we're good. No tail. Stop. Trim. Cooking on gas, guys. We are all calibrated and good to go and ready to start embroidering some stuff, guys. So my EM1010 is fully functional. It's calibrated. It's ready to start embroidering some designs. Um, I checked and made sure that when it starts embroidering, it's not leaving any tails. When it trims properly, um, I also checked it to make sure that, you know, I guess, I guess you can't really check for thread breaks unless you let it run for a long time and stuff like that so as we as we embroider stuff we'll we'll see if we're getting thread breaks and if we're getting thread breaks then we'll just adjust the tension like i told you guys right so that and if we're getting um we're not getting any bobbin thread peeking through the top so don't have to worry about that but um those are the few things in embroidery that people like don't know about or if you're a new person, you don't know how to adjust and tension and all these dials and stuff seems scary, but it's really not, especially if you know um, how to adjust for the things that you're seeing, right? Um, and that's it, man. That, that's basically it. That's what will determine um, whether you're embroidering stuff back to back to back to back smoothly or if like, and if something goes wrong on a specific needle, you have a thread break, you know, yo, this thread is pulling too tight. Let me just loosen it up a little bit because the thread is pulling too tight, right? And it all really makes sense. It all makes sense. It's just that, I don't know, maybe people don't like think about it or something like that. I'm not sure, but I mean, let me, let me just let the machine run now. Let the machine run a little bit and do its thing. Use, um, let it go through its paces. But yeah, I guess some people just don't think about it and, or they don't know what to check for or how to adjust their machine for certain things, but Hey, it is what it is. Once again, mine works and I hope yours does too. And if it doesn't, then maybe I can show you something to help you make yours work. You know, I'm not over there with you, but I don't know, maybe something that I showed you in this video, if you're having an issue with yours, can help you adjust and, and, and keep it running smoothly for you. I don't know. But like I said, if you're in a market for this machine or anything like it, and right now I know that this color is running good. Let me switch it to another color real fast. Stop. Cut. All right, let me switch it to another color and I'm going to let it run for a little bit. Um, 10, we're going to go backwards now. Put that on nine. Okay, acknowledge that. Let me let nine run for a little while, just like I let 10 run. So yeah, I'm just, you know, do stuff like that to make sure when it's time to get busy, then you can get busy. All right, so just test out all your stuff before you start going crazy and saying, oh my gosh, this dude. And let's be honest, the average person, if they're starting off, you're going to want to put your machine and you're just going to want to press go when you expect to run perfectly. And I've been down to the Recoma headquarters and I see that I saw the back room where they do all the testings of all the machines before they go out. So they do test it. I don't know whether some machines go through untested. I, I don't think so because they told me, as far as I know, they test all the machines. And I saw a group of people 
back there testing machines and stitching out a little pattern on the machine before they sent them out. So I can only go by what, I, what I've seen. I don't work there obviously, but um, that's what I saw. This color seems to be fine. 800 stitches per minute, stop. Let me go on um, eight now. And this is what you guys should do to, uh, you know, test out your machine. Looking good. All right, so um, yeah. If you're in a market for one, you know, do your research. I'm gonna be making plenty of videos on this thing. So we're gonna be taking it through the paces. We're gonna be designing stuff. We're gonna be going Etsy crazy. We're gonna be putting some stuff on some, on some shorts. I'm gonna be doing some applique. We're gonna be doing some larger designs. And I'm gonna be throwing some of those designs up on alanaywade.com for you guys. So I'm excited. I'm excited that it's here in our new crafting room and we can start getting busy and start rolling things out and we can start elevating even more because we've already come a long way, Dub Nation, and we're only going to go farther. And right now, I wanna concentrate more on quality. Not quality content, but quality this stuff. I want my stuff to, I want, I want the quality to, to, to go up, so I'm gonna try to like make extra efforts to make everything, you know, line up perfectly and everything look good and, you know, even I got, a, I got a lot of sewing practice I need to do so I can sew sh in straight lines and stuff like that and turn on a dime and make sure. Um, I'm even going to like, let me change colors. I'm even going to like start uh, when I do these tutorials, I might even start practicing and making sure everything is more on point because typically like the videos that I do, look at that, interesting. I don't think I cut. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't cut that last one. So I didn't press cut. So it's just a tail stuck there. See how, see how easily something can happen? Like I stopped and I didn't even, but shouldn't it have cut it on its own? Let me see, let me go back. That's on seven, let me go six. Okay, and when I do that, does it cut itself? No, you have to press cut. Interesting, so look at that guys. Mental note for you guys, mental note for you guys. If you are embroidering and you change colors on your, by yourself manually, you have to actually hit the scissors button for it to cut the specific color or else that color will be stuck. So you see the last two colors are stuck in there. They're still in that, they're still in the uh, thing right there. So let me go back one, right? I'm gonna ne move to needle number uh, five. No, needle number uh, eight. And then I'm gonna cut, right? And I'm gonna go to needle number seven, and then I'm gonna cut. And there we go. You have to cut for each. See, little stuff like that. You'd be like, why is it not cutting? Because you didn't tell it to cut. You, right, like right now, I didn't program the stitches. So if the stitches were programmed as it stopped that specific color to go to the next color, it would have cut automatically, right? But because I'm switching colors manually on the same, on a, on a part that's supposed to be the same color, it's not, I gotta tell it what to do because that's not how the design is set up in the program. All right, so let me continue where I was at. I was, think I was on six. I'm gonna let six stitch out for a little while. Make sure that's good. Yeah. So guys, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if this uh, kinda, even if you don't have one of these commercial machines, give me a thumbs up if this helps kinda clarify some questions that you might have about these machines in general, you know, but um, I'm using, I'm running a Recoma MT-1501. It's looking good, everything is looking good so far, and we're gonna keep on running this thing till, till the wheels fall off, and hopefully the wheels won't fall off, because I paid too much money for the wheels to fall off, and I paid for this cash money just like my MT-1501. And I, I said it before, but my MT-1501, I still owe a little bit on it, but it doesn't make it, I can pay it off anytime I want to, but it doesn't make any sense to pay that off right now because I have 0% interest on that specific uh, loan until 2026. So it makes no sense for me to hand them over my money when I'm borrowing their money to pay for it. I can keep my money in the bank. Cause I can pay, like I said, I can pay it off cash right now. I have the money to pay it off. But if you have, if you're, if it's 0% financing, 
then I'm not being charged anything right now and I can still pay for it over time as long as I'm as long as it's paid for before 2026. This is like this is finances, just basic finances for you guys. Um, um, this is stuff that you guys need to think about and um, that's going to, you know, help you make better financial decisions. So it just makes sense with the math. This one, I didn't want to finance again because I didn't want another credit pool. I had the cash. I'm like, just no, I just want this machine. It's small enough. It can fit in my space and I need to be able to do stuff where I'm at. And I want it to, it goes nice with the feng shui, you know what I mean? And this is what I do with you guys. I show you guys stuff like this. So um, this is my job. This is what I do. So if you guys are wondering why I buy all this stuff and stuff like that, it's the same reason why you see YouTubers with car channels buying a bunch of cars and switching up cars every few months and stuff like that because that's what they do for a living, right? This is what I do for a living. I show you guys how to use this stuff and I give you guys advice and I show you guys how this stuff works so you guys will have an easy transition when it's time for you to get it if it's something that you're interested in, right? So that's the point of this channel. I want to show you guys the mistakes. I want to show you guys how it works. I want to show you guys how to fix the mistakes and hopefully while you're watching and seeing what this stuff can do, you'd be like, okay, I can do X, Y, and Z, or I can do, you know, Z, Y, and X, and figure out how you can use it to, you know, this is running good, 800 stitches per minute, running good, let me switch colors again. Figure out how you can get it to work in your business, and if you don't want it to work in your business, then, you know, it's not for you, that's okay too. See, look, I didn't, I didn't trim it, I didn't, I didn't, did that again, didn't even trim. Let me go back to uh, five. Um... Okay, so when you do that, instead of put, 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 um, pressing the color and going to five, you got to press the needle and then go to five. Then the machine moves to five. Then you trim. Now trim number five. Now I can go back to four where I was at. Needle four. Color four. Okay. And then start stitching four. I'm learning stuff while I'm going. You know what I mean? I'm still learning too. So. This is all stuff that I'm gonna show you so when you guys get your equipment, you'll be more familiar and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, when you get your machine, you'll be like, oh, that's what he was referencing when he said, oh, this needs to cut, that needs to cut. It'll all connect and make sense to you guys. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, share this video with your friends. If you're considering getting a home embroider machine, this is good for the money. So far, I'm not having any issues. And while we're here, we're going to be using this like crazy. You know what I mean? If you guys have got any requests of stuff that you want me to try out, if you guys got any requests of designs that you might want to see, I'll do my best and try to put it out there for you guys and try to show you guys the machine doing some of this stuff. Of course, we're going to be doing hat embroidery on here because we got the cap attachment and stuff like that. So, you know, and one of the things that I want to do, because I heard this machine, people were having trouble doing like the structured hats. So we're gonna, we're gonna test all of that. We're gonna test all of that, guys. We're gonna see what this machine is good for, what it's not good for, what it can do, what it can't do. And I can tell you right now, off my first impressions, um, I like the, the size factor of it because it's smaller. You guys saw when I unboxed it, I picked it up by myself and put it on stands by myself. But by no means necessary do I suggest you guys try that because that's a risky move. You know, what if you drop your machine and break it? I could have dropped that machine and broke it, but that was the chance that I was willing to take because I do this. This is all entertainment. You guys are like, oh my gosh, this is going to pick it up. And I, I know when I tested the machine, I knew how, I know how strong I am. I know what I'm capable of doing. So I'm like, oh, I can pick this up. And I picked it up, right? So um, trim. You got to remember to trim, right? Three. So all my colors are running pretty good. Okay. Let's start. All my colors are running pretty good. Darn good. All right. So... I'm happy so far. 800 stitches per minute is a good speed. It's a good solid speed, all right? Trust me. And you guys that embroider already know it is. Like, it's, 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 it's average. It's average speed. If your machine can run 800 stitches per minute, you're doing good. All right? So um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. So far, so good. And I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Make sure you guys are following me on Instagram, Instagram, Adar Productions. And um, follow my YouTube, my, my Facebook page, Adub Productions because I'm I'm actually recycling this content and putting it on there because like I said in the previous video we're trying to diversify and migrate over a little bit because YouTube is acting funny. I'll make a whole video about that coming soon so stay tuned um, and that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I'm probably doing another sublimation video today 
you guys might see it today or you might see it tomorrow so stay tuned for that um oh yeah surgery video with the polyester poly, black polyester in the back white polyester in the front so much stuff i have lined up stay tuned talk to you guys in the next one peace and she keeps on going and she keeps on going this thing came out pretty good tested out all the colors on my em 1010 and this looks really really good turn up that crank it up why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best baby